this video, we're going to do a houseplant update on the Ta-da! Thai Constellation Monstera. Ta-da! The San Siberia Whale Fin. With a B. Ta-da! The Pelia Peperomiotis. Ta-da! The String of Hearts. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we're going to do a houseplant update of those four plants I showed you guys earlier. Show you guys kind of the growth they've gone through this last year. Share with you guys some of my general care tips. Also some of the challenges I face along the way with a couple of them. And answer some of the common questions you have of these plants. Uh, but before we get started, if this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Christian, also known as a crazy plant guy. I mostly do plant videos on this channel. Uh, if you have not hit that subscribe button, I have no idea what you're doing with your life but I'm just kidding <laughs> go ahead and hit that button also if you have not followed me on Instagram be sure to do so crazy plant guy because that's where I pretty much am every day uh, so let's get started All right guys so we'll get started with the Thai constellation monstera if you guys recall I got these guys about uh, almost a year now about 11 months ago and uh, they were fairly small I bought two of them they were in a two inch container and uh, yeah they were about $45 each so they were already expensive back then for a little guy I'll put a link in the description below of the video of when I first got that plant so you guys can check it out how small he was. If you're wondering why he is in uh, you know sitting in water here uh, that's because I put him in water about a month ago when I, we, I discovered that he had thrips uh, on them and uh, it came from probably the other monster that I had which was my uh, monster from Walmart that was the bigger one uh, that got infected with thrips uh, pretty badly and I noticed that it was starting to spread on um, a couple of my monsteras if you guys don't know what thrips are they're pretty much tiny little bugs that will suck the life out of your plants literally suck the life out of your plants and uh, thrips damage looks like this um, so I caught it in time on this guy it's like those brown spots. Uh, you'll find it usually underneath the leaf more first than the top. And um, if you look closely, you'll see those little bugs like, you know, obviously crawling around. Uh, so that's what I noticed on this guy after obviously discovering uh, the thrips uh, infestation on the bigger monstera from Walmart, which is uh, going through rehab and treatment right now outside. And uh, this original monstera that I have here, uh, you guys can also see what, that, what the damage looks like on this leaf. I caught it in time. so. What I did, if you guys are asking uh, how to treat um, uh, you know, plants that are uh, thrips infested, if it's not as bad, if you catch it on time, uh, definitely you can use insecticide. Uh, you can get some from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below of what I use. Um, but uh, yeah, I kind of just sprayed these guys down, uh, wash it, let them soak for a bit, wash it in water, do that twice a day and repeat the process every other day uh, until you feel like it's been removed and then just con continue to monitor it. Now, in the event that it's really badly, you know, and, and, and your plant is, is pretty much damaged where all the leaves are drooping, there's so many brown spots and all the leaves everywhere, uh, the only way to really like uh, treat that plant or, or give that plant a chance of surviving is cut off all the leaves and prune it and then uh, wash it with insecticides, which is what I'm doing with the bigger months here right now. If you guys wanna see a much more detailed video on how I go about doing that and how to, uh, uh, you know, make your plant survive through uh, a thrift infestation, uh, comment below and let me know and uh, I'll do that. But so with this guy, I was so paranoid and conscious because obviously these guys are, are not cheap, right? So I thankfully, uh, I caught it on time. He is uh, thrifts free. Um, I left this leaf on uh, where the original um, uh, damage was let's see where I find it right this one right here only because uh, you know obviously I caught it in time and I wasn't gonna prune this guy uh, because he, he's fine right now so uh, the reason why he's sitting in water is because I wanted to make sure that there was also no thrips in the soil uh, so I removed this guy from uh, the soil and uh, you know let it sit in water uh, while he was going through treatment of insecticide and uh, now he's ready to be repotted because you know, I, I want this guy to grow, obviously, so we're gonna do that. Uh, but the soil I typically use for any Monstera is a mix of uh, succulent and cacti soil, uh, about 40%, and then about like, you know, 55% uh, regular potting soil. And then I'll throw in a bit of perlite and then a bit of peat moss as well. So. I'll go ahead and mix these guys and the container I'm gonna use is this green one that is uh, 
eight inch. Yeah. And the reason why I'm using an eight inch right now is because I'm actually going to put these guys together in one pot. They were originally in their own individual pot, but I want to make that nice uh, full look. Uh, so this should hold in for uh, probably the next year or two. Um, you know, monsters do like to be a little bit snug as well, a bit root bound. Uh, and you know, typically you want to repot these guys every two years. Uh, but in this case, I had to remove them from soil. Uh, it was originally in, uh, I think they were originally in their own six inch soil. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix these guys. And then uh, obviously when it comes to repotting, you know, you put kind of like a two thirds layer uh, just to, you know, sit the uh, plant obviously uh, where you want it but that's what we're gonna do uh, growing tips for these guys um, obviously they love a lot of uh, bright indirect light so you guys know I have a south facing window a large south facing window so um, you know that really does help um, uh, a lot of my plants uh, thrive really well so I think yeah this looks good right here right now, so you want to make sure that obviously the roots are going to be below where this line is uh, but I like the way where this guy is sitting uh, have a bit of the aerial roots exposed still and then uh, go ahead and repot this guy so I like I like the way this looks like this Let's see what do you guys think uh, yeah okay so I'm gonna now go ahead and uh, continue to put soil uh, around this guy so uh, yellowing leaves, I often get the question, you know, what do you do with yellow leaves? Why do you get yellow leaves? Uh, honestly, yellow leaves is just part of the plant's uh, life cycle. Uh, oftentimes, the bottom leaves, like this guy, has a yellow leaf. I will turn yellow and, um, you know, I usually just leave it and I won't prune it until, you know, I, it can easily be removed. Uh, that's when, you know, there's no more uh, life out of that leaf and, uh, yeah, so you can remove it uh, carefully. But I like the way this guy looks like this. So I normally would not put a moss pole yet uh, because he needs to grow a little bit taller. Um, you know, normally uh, I will wait until this guy's uh, a bit bigger and starts growing out of hand uh, before I put a moss pole. Um, he doesn't have any split leaves yet. You guys can see a few of some of my plant friends uh, from Instagram who also purchased uh, Thai Constellation Monstera around the same time. Theirs already has split leaves, um, but mine hasn't yet. Uh, the leaves are just getting really big, uh, which I don't mind because, you know, I, I, I think I want these guys to grow a little bit taller. But, you know, split leaves usually happens as the plant gets mature and uh, obviously the more light uh, and uh, kind of close to the uh, environment, the wild environment they're typically in that you can get them into. So that is what I'm gonna do. Um, but yeah, so that is an update on my Thai Constellation Monstera. Um, I'm gonna, hold on, I need to get a bit more soil. Be back. And I'm back. So I'm just gonna pack a bit more in here and uh, so that way this guy can stand still. Um, so normally when I'm putting soil, uh, you do wanna pack them nice, but you don't wanna do it too uh, tight because obviously you wanna create aeration uh, for the water to, uh, you know, uh, drain through uh, because you never want to overwater any plant so um, you know you do a nice compact padding on it but again you want to make sure it's not too tight um, alrighty so I think this guy is going to be done um, but yeah so uh, other care tips of my Monstera Deliciosa is Obviously, you want to make sure you're, um, you know, cleaning the leaves so that way it maximizes the, its ability to uh, absorb light energy uh, from the sun. Uh, also, it's a good way to just, you know, um, you know, check in on your plants, make sure there's no other pests on it. Um, other pests I've encountered with my Monstera, I've never had mealies on it. Um, I've had scales on it, which is also a form of mealy bugs. But uh, again, same thing I would do with uh, the thrips is, you know, I would. Um, insecticize it, treat it a few times uh, until it's gone and just thoroughly inspect your plant and you know you can also kill it along the way like if you're one of those guys who check your plants like every day um, you know you can also uh, prevent getting a lot of pests so you know check them thoroughly and if you do see them just kill them on the spot uh, that's just another way to also prevent them from spreading uh, but yeah so this guy is now done so I'm going to water him and then uh, put him by where he was sitting earlier which is obviously close to my south facing window 
and then uh, see how this guy thrives. Uh, but yeah, excited for this. Um, really, really excited to see his first split leaves. Again, I won't be mad if he does get one this summer, uh, but I'll be extremely excited if he does. Uh, so now let's talk about my um, Santigaria Wilfin. Ta-da! The Sansevieria Whale Fin. So this guy I got about 10 months ago. And uh, again, I'll put a link in the description below of the video when I first got him so you guys can see how he looked. But um, he hasn't really grown much, um, uh, as far as I can tell anyway. But what I do notice is he's got another baby growing right here. So that was very exciting. And I pretty much noticed this maybe in a few weeks ago and already it's grown quite a bit. Uh, so if you guys recall, when I first got this, he actually had this baby with him right so it was like these two together and I split them and potted them in their own soil and now both of them are sprouting their own baby what I am curious is how the uh, rhinestone or the was it the rhinestones looks so I'm gonna actually dig this guy out and uh, see how he looks uh, so that way I can show you guys how uh, he originally um, uh, you know what he looked like when I first got him and give you guys an idea of what uh, the roots looks like at the bottom here So I'm just gonna dig him out of soil Because um, I do want to see if he needs to be repotted as well. Probably not uh, only because I want to wait until this guy is really big uh, but I, just, I am curious to see how uh, How he's grown because again, I split these guys in two, right? So Okay, you guys can see right here. I see there it is. I'll show you guys I'm making a mess. I gotta clean this up. All right. See right there. Okay, hold on. <laughs> here you guys can see exactly what I mean. So I split this guy probably right here, which was this one. And now he's growing a new one right here. So that looks so cool. I swear, plants are so cool when you just kind of watch them, uh, you know, grow and, and kind of how they go about just living and it's pretty cool uh, so I don't think I'm gonna uh, change the pot size I think he'll be fine here I was worried that it was getting a little longer which will probably push this guy out a bit uh, and not enough room to grow but I, I am I'm my goal is to get this guy as big as this guy if not bigger so that is what we're gonna do I'm gonna now try and put this guy back in I think I damaged a bit of the roots don't try this at home unless you're going to repot and uh, cut this guy because uh, you know you are risking uh, uh, kind of damaging a bit of the roots but Sansevierias, they're tough, um, they are, you know, so hardy, they pretty much can thrive in any lighting condition. Uh, they obviously prefer bright indirect light, or even some of them prefer, you know, direct sunlight, but um, I usually like to have mine obviously as close to the window as possible and I think that's what prompted them to uh, grow this quickly to show a baby. I wasn't expecting uh, it to produce another baby until maybe another year. Uh, but you know now it's summer here obviously the plants are loving it they're thriving and you know they're just uh, living their best lives uh, so yeah so that is the update on my Sansevieria whale fin next one we'll do is the ta-da the Pelia peperomiotis so if you guys recall in my last video of this guy I did a repotting of him from I think the six inch to now an eight inch uh, pot and I also removed some of his babies and propagated those in water and uh, so those babies today are uh, with some of my colleagues I gave it to them as gifts uh, they're thriving really well and uh, this guy when I originally first repotted him I actually did it around like fall almost heading into winter and normally you don't want to repot your plants uh, during the fall or winter because uh, you know when you're repotting them they're going through shock and and you obviously need as much, uh, you know, bright light, uh, warm weather, uh, the right kind of environment for them to obviously, uh, you know, thrive. But so he was quite in shock and he started to droop a bit and I was worried that he wasn't gonna make it, but he made it and he's doing well and thriving. And if you guys can even see here closely, uh, his, his babies that I still left, are starting to uh, become quite a bit mature now so I'm debating if I'm going to keep him in here throughout the summer and maybe repot again next summer uh, but I'm looking kind of the way how fast he's growing and the timeline of the season so I think I might repot him maybe next month and remove a couple more of the mature babies but I really want to leave the babies in there because I love the way uh, it looks um, how, how full he looks but if you guys are uh, wondering about how to care for this guy 
website or some of my general care tips I did do a video of that again I'll put in the link I'll put the link in the description below but yeah, he's thriving really well, and uh, you guys do see that he's got a bit of yellowing leaves here at the bottom. Uh, again, this is normal for any plants for their older, mature leaves uh, to drop, turn yellow, and drop, right? So I normally don't pull it off, I just let it naturally drop. Um, but if you are experiencing, you know, yellowing leaves at the top or the new growth, those are usually signs that you're just probably overwatering and it's not getting enough bright indirect light. I have this guy literally like two feet away from my South facing window he's been there this whole time since I got him and uh, he likes it um, now he is growing a little bit crooked uh, you guys can't really tell because uh, of, the, of the amount of leaves he's got but um, so I normally again try to rotate this guy every other day so that way he can because they typically follow the sun right but I think next time I repot this guy I might put in a stake or a uh, a stick to kind of just help it grow upright. Uh, we'll see, but again, I only water this guy when he is pretty much uh, more on the drier side. Um, unless I start seeing the leaves droop down and the soil is dry when I touch it, that's when I know he's, he's a bit thirsty. Um, also, I only use filtered water or tap water that's sitting for 24 hours uh, because when I start using tap water um, right out of the tap, it pretty much creates these uh, holes brown spots on the leaves uh, so I've learned that uh, you know obviously filtered water or tap water that's been sitting for 24 hours uh, will do its job but uh, yeah so that is this guy right now uh, if you guys do want to see a video of me repotting him to a bigger size uh, and watch his journey let me know uh, comment below so that is an update on my uh, Pelia peperomiotis uh, pipe some people say palia palia Pelia, Pelia. Uh, how do you guys say it? I say Pelia. Um, no right or wrong answer. How about we just call it a beautiful plant? I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, so now let's talk about last but not least is the Ta-da! The String of Hearts. So similar to the first three plants, I've had this one for almost a year now as well. And when I first got him, uh, he wasn't as long as this, obviously. Uh, I think the length of his strings from the top uh, to the bottom was only about a foot, a foot and a half long, and also wasn't as lush and full as what you see here today. Uh, so since then, he's obviously been thriving uh, really well, has gone, grown up to eight feet long. I've cut and propagated this guy twice now, looking to propagate. Uh, the third time maybe at the end of July when he's a little bit longer maybe hitting the floor again but um, yeah I mean like again I don't do anything special with this guy other than I think he just likes the environment he's in he's been hanging here since I got him and it's about 10 feet away from my south facing window when I do water this guy I only water him when he is pretty much bone dry or the soil is completely dry and the way for me to tell that is I've just grown accustomed to uh, his plant schedule based on obviously the size of his uh, container which is a six inch uh, you know if it's summer or winter um, and yeah so during the summer I'll water him maybe every two weeks during the winter it's maybe every three weeks uh, but another way for me to tell when to water him is to feel the hearts that are a little bit more mature so the top ones that are, have a nice and thick heart uh, if they're plump be sure, uh, that means they don't need to be watered, but if they're soft, uh, that means they do need to be watered, especially if the soil is dry. Now, a few of you guys have asked, how does the top look like? Here's a video or footage of that. Not as full as I'd like it to be, so what I typically will do is when I'm cutting or propagating, I will take a few strings that have rooted and I'll plant them back at the top and uh, just kind of make sure that he continues to grow uh, nice and full. But um, I also spend time untangling this guy. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever untangle your hearts, but he does get pretty tangled, especially when I water him because I take him over to the sink to water him. and. Uh, um, yeah, he'll get tangled at the bottom. So, you know, once I hang him back up, I'll spend uh, sometimes 40 minutes untangling him. It depends how bad it is. Um, quite tedious, but I don't mind. I enjoy it. It's a, you know, it's a very intimate moment with me and my hearts. I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, so that is an update on my string of hearts. I did do a video on how to propagate them. 
By the way, um, if you guys, okay, so let's talk about propagate because I was just seeing a few comments on you guys try to propagate them in water and um, uh, you know, there no risk for showing. You have to make sure you're creating a node and uh, you know, to create a node, you gotta cut where the leaves are um, just at the top there and then remove the two leaves and that little circle where the, where the vine is, that's your node. Another way too is uh, if you find tubers, like you see here, uh, that's another way where the roots can grow. So you guys can actually cut from there and then you can even plant them directly into soil um, or you can you know, put them in water for the, and watch the roots grow. But uh, tubers uh, is pretty cool and I'm surprised I'm seeing a lot of tubers at the bottom of the strings here. Normally you would see them at the top. Like you, obviously when you guys looked at the top of it, you saw a, a few tubers. Uh, I think those at the bottom, probably is because I kept cutting and propagating these guys and you know when you cut and propagate a plant or uh, when you cut a plant it promotes growth from where you cut and I think that's what's creating a lot of these uh, tubers uh, but yeah so that is an update on my string of hearts uh, if you guys want to know any more questions uh, or information about this guy or any of the plants I show you guys comment below and let me know but uh, yeah, other than that, that is my houseplant update. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, again, if you have not hit that subscribe button, be sure to do so. Also follow me on Instagram. Uh, other than that, hopefully you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.